Welcome to Methods in Ecology and Evolution videocast. Today we're going to talk with Corey Bradshaw about his work with his colleagues on a spreadsheet that optimizes the efficiency of reducing invasive animal density. Hi, Corey. Hello, Graciela. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, so, Corey, what is the main idea behind your work? Well, we, we originally de defi designed this, um, and it is just an Excel spreadsheet um, interface um, that would allow uh, those unskilled in, in sort of mathematical ecological modeling, and this in this particular case, we've uh, designed it for p national park managers, to have a sort of a point-and-click ready-made um, scenario where they could uh, estimate the efficiency of their culling programs and importantly that the costs associated with those culling programs um, in in Kakadu National Park in northern Australia now in this particular instance it's 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 got a very specific use um, three particular species so we've got wild pigs uh, Asian swamp buffalo and feral horses which of course are all invasive species and cause uh, some damage to local biodiversity they're a real problem buffalo are coming back in a big way there's um, millions of pigs and horses have some very localized damage. Um, so what we wanted to do is just give people a tool that uh, would allow them to estimate costs and, and see if their culling regime was effective and was actually doing what you would want it to do and reduce densities, therefore reduce damage to the park and its biodiversity values. That's very, very interesting. And um, how does your work advance methodology in ecology and evolution? I think the real uh, advance here is is not so much the the underlying mathematical uh, tools. Um, we've written this in Visual Basic, and we wrote it for a particular. Um, we wrote it in Excel, in, basically because most people are familiar with Excel. We 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 deliberately avoided um, sort of a, a glossy. Uh, GUI kind of interface and instead we we did a models with connections to the landscape so that its habitats are a cell based um, series of population specific and the user can run a, a bunch of preloaded scenarios they can change maps they can um, add different socioeconomic components in and they can see it all happening so it's it's a very basic um, easily understood tool and and really I think that's the the innovative part is that it it combines some fairly detailed ecological models um, and very dense mathematics with some very basic interface and, and then a, an, an output that anyone can understand, even someone who can't necessarily read. <laughs> we're, we're talking the, the skill level for people that manage landscapes can be everything from the most educated right through to um, illiterate. So we wanted to make something that, that people could see as well as uh, a read. Wow. <laughs> um so I guess, yes, there's an obvious um, answer here, but who do you think could apply your method? Well, th there's, there's two components to that. Obviously, what I've just said is that it's specific to Kakadu Park Ranges, and that includes Aboriginal Australians um, who wouldn't necessarily have all of the, um, the, the training to, to get into the, to the detailed mathematics of it, or who aren't really familiar with computers, but they can see things on the screen. Uh, but we've... we've We've done this so that it would be, uh, as I said, a cell-based or a landscape sc uh, scale-based uh, simulation. So you could apply this same format to any species, really, in any landscape around the world if you had the appropriate data. Now, admittedly, this is probably best applied to macro vertebrates um, over fairly large spatial scales, probably tens to hundreds of kilometers. Um, but uh, I don't see any reason why it couldn't eventually be adapted to smaller systems or, or even, you know, non-animal systems, plants, weedy species, that sort of thing, plants, weedy species, that sort of thing. But I can show, I, I can show a few um, uh, aspects of it. So I'm just going to start up a, my screen sharing here, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see my little Excel interface. So we've called this the Spatiotemporal Animal Reduction, or STAR, model. And uh, Graziella, can can we all see this now on your yes, end? Yes. Yes. Great. Okay. So it's it's got a fairly dense uh, interface page, and really what it does is um, it you can you can choose the species, you can choose um, a number of preloaded scenarios, and for example, we have pigs at 50% uh, park-wide reduction. We have district-specific culls because in this particular case, the 
park is managed on a district basis. Um, uh, we have costs, so helicopter shooting costs, uh, overhead costs, um, and uh, a, t a type two sort of functional response that can uh, that uh, you can modify per species. And we have a whole bunch of spatial and non-spatial uh, optimization routines, which I won't go into now. Uh, but basically, the idea is that you set a budget or you set a density target, you press go, and it'll optimize spatially um, or, or by budget the best way to get essentially the biggest bang for your buck. Um, and I'll just run a little scenario here. We've got a, a pig park-wide coal. Um, we're going for 10 years. We're starting with an initial coal of about 63% and then sort of a maintenance coal of 47% thereafter. We're going to run that for 10 years, so I'll just click go here. And you can see the landscape is changing between wet and dry season in this particular case. And there we go. There's our output for pigs. So we've managed to achieve um, a park-wide reduction of nearly 95%. Um, We've got the, the sort of the, the, the numbers on the side here and even a, a cost um, benefit score, which is linked back to, uh, in the, you know, the readers can actually look at the paper, but a, a damage um, and political vexation layer that optimizes based on those properties. So you can then just go back and see in this particular case, it costs us um, $38 million over 10 years to uh, kill um, 30,000 pigs at an average um, total reduction of I think 97% and uh, we've attained our target. Cost per animal was $1,233. Seems like a lot but when you've got um, tens of thousands of pigs and massive landscape wide, wide damage it's actually a fairly cheap option. Now as I said there, there, there's the spatial optimization components that allow you to uh, look at more specific regional based culls and probably do this more efficiently than I've just shown here. But I think the users can kind of get the idea and you can even, and I said the visual component here is we can go to the output maps and you can see the initial population density is just done, done on a, 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 a factor scale and then the final population density. So you see in this particular case we're extremely effective and especially from the, the northern parts of the park, the wetlands that the pigs really like, we really sort of knocked them on the head there. Um, and then, yeah, you can do that for buffalo and horses and change all your inputs or, or different uh, components. And all. we've compared a lot of different uh, strategies uh, in the paper and then provided a user's manual as well. That's really, really cool. <laughs> Thank you, Corey.